Rainwater is acidic enough to uh, solely dissolve limestone just by picking up carbonic, becoming carbonic acid as it falls through sure. the know that from cave systems developed around the world, yes. Right. So um, what effect do these hot, acidic, hydrothermal fluids have on the limestone and the dolomite strata within the boundaries of the mineralizing system? Well, that, that's a very good question. Of limestone, you get cavitation, and this cavitation can convert to brushes, collapse brushes. As the rock, the, so these cavities can be so large that literally the, the roof has to collapse. And this is the framework that we are dealing with. And we have absolutely confirmed this through our drilling because we have extended all our drill holes to the extent that we can well down into Devil's Gate, if not through the entire section of Devil's Gate. And Devil's Gate's about 800 feet thick. I, in this North Bullion area, and I have reported this out in press releases, there are huge volumes of collapsed brushes. I've actually never seen anything quite like it. Um, and by the collapsed brushes, that, that's, that's just one of the best environments for gold deposition anywhere. And the bigger and better deposits on the Carlin Trend, and the two very good examples, or many examples, would be Gold Strike and Gold Quarry. These deposits formed as a result of collapse or brachiation and the collapse that occurred, the cavitation and subsequent collapse that occurred uh, both within the limestones and the, and the rocks above the limestones. And that's exactly the case at railroad. So we're dealing with collapse that uh, within Devil's Gate that can be up to 800 feet thick. And then that collapse propagates up into the overlying rocks up several hundred feet. So our, our host sections are in the range of, let's say, between 800 and 1,000 or 1,200 feet thick. And that's, those are the, some of the thicknesses of the brushes that we're seeing. And what we're also encountering, of course, are very large volumes in, uh, of, of low levels of gold. Now, while we think we're looking at the, the halos uh, that uh, occur in association with the emplacement of these gold deposits. So it's, they're part of the gold deposits, but the, the low-grade flanking uh, zones. What we are trying to key into are the, feed, the places where the uh, feeder structures occur. We, um, we can get a general idea about where those feeder structures are we, uh, and how they're oriented. Uh, and we got that from the uh, very detailed gravity surveys that we have conducted over the entire property. Uh, we now have about 3,000 uh, gravity stations at, uh, with uh, a, lot of, uh, at a lot of detail there, uh, close space gravity. And we, we can start seeing generally where these structures occur. Uh, the, Problem is on the prospect scale, and that is specifically where you want to be with the drill. It's tighter. These gold deposits, the high grade portions of these gold deposits, can be very tight to these feeder structures. We have to find the feeder structures in the first place. Once you find out the feeder structures, then you can tend, you, you can line up your drill and just chase along the feeder structures. That's when you become very successful uh, routinely. Right now, we're, we're uh, drilling over in the North Bullion area, for example, an area of about 3,000 feet north-south, and up now we're almost 2,000 feet east-west, and we're seeing in all these holes massive amounts of collapsed brushes. We're hoping that we get to a point where we can start vectoring into where the gold is, and you can do that on the basis of, well, gold itself, to some extent, so the higher grade grades that you see, that's probably the direction you want to head to some extent, and also the uh, thicknesses of the collapse brushes, the alteration types within the collapse brushes, doldamization, the very important solidification, baritization, there's alienite, uh, kaolinite, uh, sericite. Uh, we look for dikes, of course, and we have encountered some dikes because the dikes often use those same conduits that uh, that the gold solutions, the gold bearing solutions utilized in order to mineralize these collapsed brushes. Well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult task and 
what we don't have in the North Bullion area is much in the way of we really don't have uh, surface exposures of the of the rock units. Even if we did, there's a complication of a number of non-permissive rock units having slid over on top of these collapse pressures, completely obscuring them from uh, from uh, uh, any kind of expression or almost any kind of expression. Certainly, we can't see the collapse brushes and of course we can't see them and nobody else ever did either but we are seeing them with the core drilling that we're doing it's very important uh, that we are core drilling in fact we're doing the first exploration core drilling ever done on the property and I just wouldn't trade uh, uh, go back to RC not not in this kind of situation where you have this uh, extreme complexity and you need as much information as you can get you need to see the rocks, not just quarter inch chips. Right. Very important to see the fabric and character of the rocks, the textures. Uh, these collapsed brushes that we are seeing are as complex as I've seen anywhere. Multi-stage, once again, it gets, and the multi-stage kind of serves to perhaps uh, have allowed multi-stages of introduction of gold. I mean, that, that is the hope and that, that is often what happens. The more complex the brush is, and this is based on past experience, the more complex the brush is, usually you get more stages of gold introduction, which means the higher grade. And, and so what we are seeing is at least there's the framework and the candidate uh, of these class brushes for having some very high grade gold deposits. We're uh, working at zeroing in on those uh, gold deposits right now. This is Jim Richmond, and I'm a shareholder of Gold Standard Ventures.